My dear viewers, hello and welcome to a new episode of our program, Cairo Local Time, during which we bring you the latest political, economic, social, also sports and cultural events that are taking place in Egypt. Uh, I have the pleasure to be joined uh, today with my dear uh, colleague, uh, Lamia Abdel Sattar. Hello, Lamia. Hello, Amal. Hello, Amal. Thank you. Hello, dear viewers. We'll go on a short break and we'll be back again. S'étalant sur 18 mètres carrés, le 12 Galerie marque un élan en avant pour le Grand Musée égyptien 
explique Aïssa Zidane, le directeur général de restauration au musée. Ces galeries s'ajoutent aux autres pavillons déjà inaugurés, où les visiteurs peuvent contempler l'obélisque suspendu. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We start this episode of Cairo Local Time with our local news uh, bulletin. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi have uh, received uh, Jose Manuel uh, Albarin's uh, Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs of the European uh, Union and uh, Cooperation of uh, Spain and his accompanying delegation on Thursday. Presidential spokesman said President al-Sisi appreciated the positive Spanish stances as the meeting uh, discussed the current regional situations uh, and the developments uh, most 
most notably the Palestinian issue, which is reflected on the ongoing coordination between Egypt and Spain and the common vision that uh, unites uh, them in order to achieve peace in the region. For his part, the Spanish Foreign Minister conveyed uh, to President Sisi greetings and appreciation from the Spanish uh, Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez uh, and pointed out uh, Spain's uh, full support and backing for the tireless Egyptian efforts to seize uh, fire in the Gaza Strip and enforce humanitarian aid. He also affirmed the pivotal uh, role played by Egypt regionally to stop the expansion of the circle of the conflict and to advance efforts in order to establish uh, peace and stability in the Middle East. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received Iranian Foreign Minister Abbas Araqji on Thursday. Presidential spokesman said that the meeting focused on reviewing the current development in the region. During the meeting, President al-Sisi stressed the necessity of intensifying international efforts aimed at stopping the ceasefire in Gaza and Lebanon, stopping violations and attacks in the West Bank, in addition to implementing quick and sufficient humanitarian aid to end worsening conditions in the Gaza Strip. For his part, the Iranian, foreign, the Iranian minister expressed his country's appreciation for the ongoing Egyptian efforts to achieve stability and security in the region, praising the vital role played by Egypt on all tracks. Well, uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has appointed on Wednesday Hassan Mahmoud Rashad as uh, the head of Egypt's General Intelligence Service. President Sisi also appointed former uh, the uh, Intelligence Agency Chief Abbas Kamel as advisor and special envoy of the, the President and General Coordinator of the Security Services. Major General Hassan Mahmoud Rashid Rashad is a graduate of the Military Technical College and has had a long career within the Egyptian General Intelligence Service. He rose uh, through the ranks of the position of Deputy Director. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli emphasized that the state is considering all potential scenarios amid current regional tensions, pointing out that the term war economy does not suggest that Egypt is entering a war. Madbouli clarified that Egypt will engage in military conflict only if directly threatened, such as through attacks on its borders or vital resources. Details follow. Prime Minister Mustafa Madouli emphasized that the state is considering all potential scenarios amid current regional tensions, pointing out that the term war economy does not suggest that Egypt is entering a war. Madouli clarified that Egypt will engage in military conflict only if directly threatened, such as through attacks on its borders or vital resources. During a press conference, he reiterated that Egypt follows a highly balanced approach, asserting that the Egyptian armed forces are committed to defending the nation and will only take action if the country is directly threatened. Furthermore, Madbouli shed further light on the term war economy, which he used recently. He explained that according to his usage of the term, a war economy does not indicate that the country intends to go to war, but that the state effectively allocates and manages state resources in preparation for potential regional escalations. In addition, Madbouli warned that the attacks on critical oil or nuclear infrastructure in the region could have catastrophic consequences that could cause the conflict to spiral out of control as supporters to the conflict begin retaliatory strikes. Madbouli added that these attacks would also impact global oil prices and reduce the available amounts of these products worldwide and access to them. Moreover, he highlighted that any such escalation could severely disrupt global trade, impacting shipping routes, logistics and supply chains. However, he reassured the public that the government is fully prepared and has taken measures to secure the nation's resources in case of potential conflicts. 
Last week, a public controversy sparked following Magbule's statements about the possibility of Egypt being forced to adopt the economy in case war breaks out in the region. Well, um, uh, the second shipment of the Egyptian uh, medical and relief aid uh, has arrived at uh, Beirut airport on Wednesday as a part of Egypt's support for Lebanon facing Israel's attacks. Uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Migration and Expatriate Affairs, Badra Abdul Ati, have emphasized that uh, the uh, ministry is working uh, tirelessly with various uh, state agencies uh, in order to address the consequences uh, of the Israeli attacks on Lebanon. We have more in the following report. The second shipment of Egyptian medical and relief aid arrived at Beirut airport on Wednesday as part of Egypt's support for Lebanon facing Israel's attacks. Minister of Foreign Affairs Bedra Abdelati emphasized that the ministry is working tirelessly with various state agencies to address the consequences of the Israeli attacks on Lebanon. Abdelati said that Cairo is actively engaged in diplomatic efforts to secure an immediate and comprehensive ceasefire. On the humanitarian front, Egypt has delivered 44 tons of aid so far and will continue to support the Lebanese government and people. Regarding the Egyptian community in Lebanon, Abdelati confirmed that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the embassy in Beirut remain committed to assisting Egyptians in the country. This includes facilitating the return to Egypt and providing consular services which the embassy continues to offer despite the deteriorating security situation in Beirut. The aid consists of 33 tons of essential food items and living supplies sent to relieve displaced families affected by the ongoing crisis in Lebanon. Egypt's ambassador to Lebanon received the shipment alongside representatives from the Lebanese government and their president of the Lebanese Relief Council. In addition to the humanitarian aid, the Egyptian embassy in Beirut successfully repatriated 304 Egyptian nationals and their families who were stranded in Lebanon due to the Israeli war. This brings the number of Egyptians evacuated through special flights operated by Egypt Air to 904. The seventh Cairo Water Week concluded on Thursday, which was entitled Water and Climate Building Resilient Societies. The seventh edition coincided with Egypt hosting the African Water Week as the current chair of the African Ministerial Council on Water. The event brought together high-level officials, experts, and representatives from over 30 regional and international organizations with more than 155 sessions and a major exhibition showcasing innovations in water management. The event included workshops, competitions for young entrepreneurs and postgraduate students, and an ex exhibition featuring modern technological solutions in water desalination and re renewable energy. The Cairo Water Week underlined the crucial role of water management in addressing the escalating climate change impacts and building resilience through a comprehensive approach. The event provided a vital platform for experts, policymakers, and stakeholders to explore innovative solutions and collaborative initiatives through insightful discussions and practical workshops. To shed more light on the Cairo Water Week, we are delighted to be joined over the phone by Rauf Gaffar, irrigation engineer. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my dear. Uh, what's the significance of the seventh Cairo Water Week's slogan, Water and Climate Building Resilient Solutions? Well, it, uh, the, the words explain itself. I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the water being the most valuable resource on the planet is getting uh, uh, it's facing a lot of challenges and it's getting further and further uh, with the climate change so that is why uh, we, are, we should uh, as you said in, in the report try and find the best management of water resources uh, to uh, well use it as long as we want and uh, uh, not to face any problem due to lack of water. So this is the, uh, uh, the, 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 the meaning of the slogan at the end of the day. 
Uh, the seventh edition coincided with Egypt hosting the African Water Week. What's your take on this? Uh, I beg your pardon? Can you, can you repeat the okay. question? Okay. The seventh edition coincided with Egypt hosting the African Water Week. Uh, what's your take yes. on this? Well, I mean, water is important. Uh, Egypt is one of the countries that uh, uh, is, is using uh, a lot of water depending on uh, the Nile coming from different countries and uh, hosting uh, this uh, very important event shows uh, what Egypt gives to the importance of keeping uh, the, the, the water resources uh, intact and uh, 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 arranging with other African countries. You know that uh, the Nile uh, crosses around uh, 12 countries. So they have to put their heads together uh, to fix the quotas for every and each one of them and uh, so that they can use it uh, properly and m make it uh, uh, consistent and, uh, and continuous. Uh, that uh, makes it important to, to hold such conferences to agree on uh, the uh, amount of water and the challenges that the lack of water might present to not only to African countries but to humanity in general. Thank you so much, Mr. Raoul Gafar, irrigation engineer. We are delighted to have you with us. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. A short break, and we are going to be back with you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, the Central Bank of Egypt, uh, CBE, will uh, review the key interest uh, rates in its uh, Thursday meeting with the banking efforts, expecting uh, the CBE to keep the interest uh, rates unchanged. The Central Bank have increased uh, the interest rates by 800 basis uh, uh, points uh, since uh, the beginning of the year 2024, raising uh, the overnight deposit rate. We have more in the following report. The Central Bank of Egypt will review the key interest rates in its Thursday meeting, with banking experts expecting the CBE to keep the interest rates unchanged. The Central Bank has increased the interest rates by 800 basis points since the beginning of 2024, raising the overnight deposit rate, overnight lending rate, and the rate of main operations to 27.25%. 28.25% and 27.75% respectively. The CBE's Monetary Policy Committee has kept the rates unchanged during the past three meetings since they hiked the rates by 600 BPS in March. Thursday's meeting will be the sixth for the MPC this year and it will hold two other meetings on the 21st of November and 26th of December. The CBE will likely maintain current interest rates amid high inflation. High interest rates deter investors from taking out loans to expand production. Instead, many will likely prefer depositing their funds in banks to take advantage of attractive interest rates and to limit their exposure to market risks. Fitch expected that the CBE will start easing monetary policy in 2025 and the interest rate will decrease by 1,200 BPS to reach 16.25% by the end of 2025. Nevertheless, economic experts forecasted that the CBE will decrease interest rates by 2% by the beginning of 2025. Egypt's annual headline inflation rose to 26% in September, up from 25.6% in August, while core inflation slightly declined to 25% in September, down from 25.1% in August.
Welcome back, dear viewers. The Grand Egyptian Museum announced the beginning of the trial run of its main galleries, offering visitors an exclusive purview of Egypt's rich history through meticulously meticulously curated exhibitions. The museum is open daily from 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. with ticket sales closing at 4 p.m. Ticket prices vary based on category with admission starting at Egyptian 200 Egyptian pounds for Egyptians and 1,200 Egyptian pounds for Arabs or other nationalities and 600 pounds for expatriates. Discounts are available for children, students and seniors. Visitors will have the opportunity to span 12 meticulously curated exhibition halls of the main galleries showcasing the evolution of Egyptian civilization from prehistoric times to the Roman era. Guests will explore key themes such as royalty, society, and beliefs. They will immerse themselves in the ancient Egyptians' daily lives, rituals, cultural practices, and burial customs. The museum will house over 100,000 artifacts. To date, appro approximately 50,000 artifacts have already been relocated to the new museum. Furthermore, visitors can embark on this journey at their own pace by booking an admission ticket or a 90-minute guided tour. And to shed more light uh, on uh, the Grand Egyptian uh, Museum inauguration, we have the pleasure to have with us over the phone our dear guest, Mr. Ahmed uh, Badr, the tourism expert. Uh, Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening to you and uh, all the audience. Thank you Thank very you much. So. Thank you so much. It's our pleasure. Uh, Mr. Uh, Badr, um, uh, now uh, the, uh, yesterday, uh, the uh, trial uh, opening of the Grand Egyptian uh, Museum have, uh, took place, uh, which is uh, uh, Egypt's gift to the whole world, uh, encompassing uh, more than 57,000 uh, uh, statues uh, or monuments. Uh, uh, we hear that uh, it would take you one month to tour uh, the uh, museum if you stand for one minute in front of every statue. What would you say about this? Uh, yes, that, uh, the museum is huge uh, and it takes really, uh, if you want to stay in front of every piece, it will take you uh, months, really. Uh, it's like the old Egyptian museum, Tahrir, it will take you almost maybe years to finish if you want to see all the pieces. But uh, at the end, uh, this is something for the uh, you know, professionals and experts, but for tourists, uh, I think the visit will take around uh, three to four hours maybe uh, to see all the highlights, especially when uh, we open the... Uh, King Tut uh, Gallery with all uh, pieces definitely will take longer because uh, there are so many uh, highlights in King Tut collection like the mass and the golden chambers and all these uh, famous pieces. So uh, the Grand Duchy Museum is really it's, uh, a great add to our uh, tourism portfolio and uh, we started already to include it in the itineraries for the clients coming to Egypt uh, to go and see uh, the museum during its uh, uh, trial phase right now until yes. uh, the grand opening, which we hope to be soon. Uh, yes, uh, uh, but uh, the trial uh, uh, opening of the Grand Egyptian Museum, uh, the, uh, uh, of, of, uh, uh, until the official opening, uh, the uh, gallery of uh, the Tutankhamun is not yet uh, opened or ready. Yes, uh, yes. yes uh, it, was, mm -hmm. it would be ready by uh, the official opening. Give us an idea about this, uh, because of course uh, Tutankhamun and his treasures uh, is making the Egyptians and the whole uh, world uh, going crazy with uh, the young uh, king. Yes, we all know that uh, when King Tuff's tomb was discovered back in 1922, yes. uh, the whole world gone really crazy because it was uh, the first and only until now uh, Egyptian king that his tomb was discovered uh, full, intact, that uh, not missing any teeth. Uh, so that gave us uh, an idea about what the Egyptian king uh, used to have in the tomb. Uh, 
uh, because in fact uh, we all know he's uh, a boy king. He just uh, wasn't uh, like he was a king for like uh, just eight nine years during a very uh, hard time of uh, ancient Egypt, and he was not that uh, famous or strong like the other uh, big kings, as we can say, like uh, Moses III or Ramses II or uh, City First. All these great kings, we can imagine what was uh, their treasures uh, looked like before they were uh, perhaps during, you know, throughout the history. So yes. for the first time, uh, all uh, the pieces, which is sort of like 5,200 pieces almost, will be in display for the first time altogether when the uh, King Tut Gallery will be open uh, uh, when the museum will be officially open. Uh, so this will be a great uh, and amazing uh, chance yes. and an amazing thing for Egypt and for all travelers to Egypt to come and see this, uh, all these amazing uh, pieces. We all know the, the golden mask is one of the things that uh, driving uh, everybody crazy when we see it because it's really... Uh, a masterpiece, something that uh, cannot be done even with today's technology. Nobody can yes. do it, nobody can yes. uh, replicate so, it. So with the treasures, uh, uh, or encompassing the treasures of uh, Tutankhamun in the Grand Egyptian Museum, uh, it have uh, toured several parts of the world uh, in exhibitions in London, in Paris, in the United States, until it came back to Egypt to stay for, uh, forever in the Grand Egyptian Museum. Also, uh, one of the things that were uh, transferred to the uh, Grand Egyptian Museum is the huge statue of King Ramses II that was in the Ramses Square here in downtown in uh, Cairo. So uh, concerning the, t the, the monuments that were transferred inside the, the Grand Egyptian Museum, would like to uh, take more, uh, uh, to come closer uh, or shed more light on it. There are so many uh, famous pieces that were uh, moved to the gym. Uh, like you said, uh, here is that of King Ramses II uh, and also one of his uh, Oblast that was in a uh, place called Tani, uh, moved also to the gym, and also the uh, solar boat of uh, King Chaos that was moved uh, from the pyramids to be in display in the gym, uh, and so many other uh, pieces and statues for uh, kings and queens from Egypt, from all uh, uh, parts of Egyptian history. Uh, we moved already also to the gym. Uh, and for those who are asking about the old uh, museum, it will not be closed. It will just be uh, renovated and will be opened again because there are so many other uh, pieces that should be on display in the old museum. So together, uh, both of them will be uh, a full experience yes. for uh, travelers to Egypt that uh, can take uh, at least two days uh, to see both museums. Yes. Uh, also, uh, uh, Mr. Badr, um, uh, there were uh, there are uh, several uh, sections in uh, inside the, the uh, Grand Egyptian uh, Museum. Uh, even there are uh, a section for the children to know more about uh, the Egyptian history. Uh, give us an idea about the several sections uh, that uh, uh, deals with uh, all the ages. Or the, uh, all the uh, ages of the visitors? Uh, yes, there are sections for kids, sections for, uh, of course, most, uh, most of the uh, museum is for adults and for kids. Mm -hmm. And it involves some uh, interactive, interactive uh, activities for them yes. to know more about the Egyptian history. Uh, and uh, also some uh, places where they can go and see the restoration of the old uh, uh, pieces and uh, uh, shopping area and so many places. Actually, the, the, the museum is really 
There are so many uh, interesting places to go, and you can spend the whole day there uh, when it's fully open, and you will not uh, feel bored, and you will see uh, different things. Yes. Uh, so I thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you uh, for your valuable information, uh, Mr. Ahmed Badr, tourism expert. Uh, we really had the, the pleasure to have this uh, phono with you. Thank you, Elamia. Thank you. And um, we have another. Okay. So news, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Badr Abdelati, emphasized that the ministry is working tirelessly with various state agencies to address the consequences of the Israeli attacks on Lebanon. So yes, uh, yes, Lamia. I thank you very much for uh, being with me uh, today. Uh, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I was in uh, the company of uh, my colleague uh, Lamia Abdel Sattar. My name is Alan Mukhtar. Thank you for watching.